Okay, now we're going to set up and configure a basic A1200 in FS UAE. I'm going to take you through the actual process of doing this. Well, I say basic, um, I'm going to go for a Amiga that I actually owned at the time. And that's an A1200 with a trapdoor expansion port. So if we best idea, if you actually want to actually set up any Amigas, is to actually pop over to Wikipedia and have a look at the specs of the Amigas and follow those. We're going to be using the A1200, which is the Motorola 68 series in there. It's worth knowing that there's two types of CPUs, and we'll get into that later. I'm going to go for the A1200 with a 2 megabyte of built-in chip RAM and 8 megabyte in the trapdoor. So here's a trapdoor suspension. So we can see the actual fast RAM is expanded by 8 megabytes there. That will give us plenty of, of actually the expansion and memory to actually use the emulated Amiga. Obviously it's going to be a lot more quicker anyway. So we just drop this down the Amiga Mod A1200 and we select the 3.1 ROM with the 6820 CPU. So now that's done, we can actually jump over to the ROM and RAM. Now, remember in spec, we go to the chip RAM of two megabytes and the fast RAM, we're gonna have that expanded. So we're gonna actually click on expand it, expand it, uh, sorry, onto the fast RAM and click on the eight megabytes. Slow RAM we don't need because the Amiga 1200 doesn't actually use slow RAM. Slow RAM is actually fast RAM. It's available via the trapdoors on the A5500s. Um, we need to select the CPU. So select the 6820 because the 68 EC versions are actual lower chipset sets. They're basically a cheap version of the CPU and they don't have as much addressing space in them. And we're gonna because we're using six eight zero twenty, we're gonna install the uh, install the JIT compiler, and also the floppy drive. Don't set this to turbo. Set this to eight hundred because if you set it in turbo, you find out around about one in ten games will actually not work. So it's best compiler to stick that as as eight hundred. The JIT compiler actually speeds everything up. So if you're using a six eight twenty, it's only available for six eight twenty and higher. Um, so we can use that. Now we'll just save this configuration and give it a1200, um, 8 megabytes, and we'll give it basic config. So we can save that there. So that allows us to save our config. So we'll just hit the button on the end to save and it'll pop up in this uh, space here. And you can see we've got different config sections here. And that's just saved it to the normal config. So that's about it for the time being. I'm not going to put any CD-ROM drives in or hard drives at the moment. That will come in another tutorial. Um, we'll be just using the basic floppy drives here. So now uh, we don't have to worry about the NTSC because we're in. I'm actually doing this in UK. You can actually change that if you want. But I'll just show you where these configs are saved. If you pop over documents, FSUAE, depends where you've actually uh, got your, uh, your file saved to. You'll find a, a file in here for your config that you've just saved off. And if we open it in a text editor, you can see our config is saved in plain text, which allows us to share it with anybody else. You probably can even download these from the net if you so desire, but it's well worth going through and actually setting one up yourself. So if we hit the start, it will actually load up this config, or we can just double click on the config. And as you can see, it's loaded up. Now you notice that down the bottom, you've got the CPU scaling governor is power save, not performance. We're gonna actually show you how to actually fix that in a moment. So this is all up and running. If you hit F12, we can actually bring up the other options and it allows us to uh, also exit the um, screen itself. So let's fix this CPU governor issue. The English Mega Board will have everything you need to actually solve your issues. So we're just gonna run this command here to actually fix the governor issues of our problem that we have. I'm just gonna highlight, copy, copy it, jump over to the terminal, 
Let's first of all find the terminal. There we go, open the terminal up and we're just gonna paste it in there and run that command. And when we've run the command, we can see that we have the performance come up in our terminal and we should be all set to go. And now when we press start, we'll see that our command has actually fixed the issue and we don't get the message coming up. So we're going to look at the uh, actual display settings now and show you some of those. And you'll notice that the display settings aren't actually shown on the right hand side here. So if you click the large hamburger, you'll see the display settings. Then you notice that the start ones are the default. There are actually two options in, if we look at high bezel, you see there's three options there. There are actually two, the star option and the high bevel option are exactly the same. So if we start these, we can see that our display starts up in the default resolution. And if we hit F12, we'll be able to come out of this and release our pointer. So I release my pointer so I can actually scale the actual screen itself. So we can pull out the top and bottom anchor points of the screen. And also I can double click on the menu bar to allow this to maximize. We'll just close this down. So if we close it down and restart it again, we'll see we'll end up with the screen back to its defaults. Now the smaller hamburger allows us to get to the video settings and you'll see this start in full screen mode. So I'm going to select on for this one and we're going to have to go at this one. There are other options in here as well that we're going to actually explore. I'm going to explore a few, a few of them such as the render scan lines that are sitting there. So let's come out of this and we'll hit start and we start in full screen mode. Now you see the CPU scaler governor is still showing here. That's because I've restarted my machine so I need to run that command again. We'll look at actually making that command permanent. If I hit F12 I need to actually use the arrow pad to actually get out of the screen because our mouse pointer well there's no menu bar for our mouse pointer to actually hit the cross upon. So let's have a look at the scan lines. So we come down to render scan lines and place this on and this gives us more of a retro feel to our screen when we view it. So hit start and you'll see the scan lines are actually rendered on screen as I was looking on our old style monitor or TV screen. Let's close this down by using the F12 and using the arrow pad. And what I want to also show you is that we have other modes that we can actually use for our video if we upgraded our base 1200 system. So we start putting Blizzard cards in there, PowerPC cards, then we have to do additional configuration over here. And we can actually start adding memory to graphics cards over here. But we'll look at this at a later date when we actually build a power Amiga to actually play with. But this is just looking at a standard Amiga. Remember to save your config. And once that config is saved, if we look in our files, you will notice one thing. So we jump over to documents, FSUAE, and look at the configuration. And you will notice that the full screen mode and the scan lines aren't actually in this file. Now this is in a different file. This is in any file. And this is actually placed in the data and then the settings in E. And if we open this up, you can actually see the full screen is in here. And also, you'll see that it's maximized one and scanalyzed one. So all those are true. So that's where our sentence that we just set is set. 
you also see that the basic Amiga settings are set there for which you last picked and you'll also notice that the actual configuration that we're using is actually in here as well so if you want to back up any of your settings make sure you back up your config and your settings in here as well